Let's watch a 1939 cartoon that shows us, well, just how much better off the world would be without humanity. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, yeah. Yeah. Hester Brothers Cartoon Theater. I'm Alec. This is my brother Lucas. And the month of December is Christmas month in the Cartoon Theater. I'm so excited. This is my favorite holiday. Whether you celebrate Christmas or whether you just like to watch the cartoons that go along with it, we're happy to have you on this journey this month. And we're going to be starting off with a new episode of Toon Museum, where we induct a gem of animation history into our hypothetical museum that we have fictionally created within our own minds. One day, when we have enough subscriptions, wink wink, and money coming in, we're gonna design a website that has an actual virtual museum so that people can look at all of our inductees. And if that sounds awesome to you, and it should, then definitely subscribe and hit like, because like helps, and comments, those help too and all those things, charitable, charity us. <laughs> Today's inductee is a short film from 1939 called Peace on Earth. It is from MGM, Metro Goldwyn Mayer. A lot of people don't think of MGM as a uh, network that was making a lot of cartoons. You know, we usually think of the Disneys and the Warner Brothers with Looney Tunes and things like that. So unless you've been watching a lot of Turner Classic movies, you may not think a lot of MGM, but that's because their cartoon branch closed in 1957. But their studio was famous for Tom and Jerry, made by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, and they made that before they went on and did their own company that everybody knows as Hanna-Barbera. Hanna-Barbera did not work on this one particularly, but Hugh Harmon, he was the creator of Looney Tunes and also the creator oh. of this short film. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's a cool thing. Now, Lucas, I have a lot of fond memories of this cartoon. Uh, I remember watching it growing up. I think we probably watched it with our dad at one point, and then I watched it again as an adult. Our mm -hmm. dad, of course, is somebody who showed us a ton of really old cartoons, and I feel like that's part of the reason we have such a reverence for these classics that we do now. So major shout out to him for that, because I don't know if I would have had the wherewithal to appreciate what a beautiful piece of history this was without that upbringing of having cartoons be such an important part of our life. Raise your kids with culture, everybody. It's important, okay? <laughs> you thought you hadn't seen this when we came into it, but now you think that you have. Yeah. I didn't recognize it by name. I, I think I watched it a year or two ago, um, so pretty recently. I knew that you were recommending a Christmas short to open our, our you know, winter holiday celebration month. I was not expecting this to be the one. And when I saw where this goes, which we'll get into, I was like, oh, oh, this is the one Alec has reverence for. Oh, okay. Obviously, Lucas is the Halloween guy if you watched any of our Halloween month coverage, and I'm very much the Christmas person. I do love the cheeriness of Christmas. I love the vibe that it brings out, and I have so many fond nostalgic memories from all of these things. This short film, it's not all that cheery. It's a little bit dark in a way. Essentially, what the premise is, these animals that are living in a peaceful world, which is only peaceful because humans have gone extinct Distinct from fighting at war with each other until they died. And they died! <laughs> Humanity's wiped out! This is a post-apocalyptic 1938 cartoon about Christmas. What? 1939. The reason I have reverence for it though is because it is a beautifully told story that in my opinion actually is very uplifting and sends a terrific message. But I'm gonna kind of kick off with the history of this thing. When we induct these historical pieces of animation into Toon Museum, we want to start off with some of the really cool facts that go behind them. As we stated, it's from 1939, which was only a couple months after World War II had officially started. So it takes place in this world that is post-apocalyptic, and it's symbolizing the, the very real wartime fears that were existing in the entire world at that time. Animation historian Jerry Beck actually rated this cartoon as number 40 in his book, The 50 Greatest Cartoons Ever Made. A book of which I would love a copy of this Christmas, if anybody's listening. It wasn't just his personal opinion, though. This list was actually voted on a thousand people in the animation industry, and this one made the list. Uh, wow. Definitely has some history around it there. I know of this cartoon as being 
the cartoon that was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Well, there's a little bit of conflict about whether that is a true story or not, and I really dug to try to figure this out the best way that I could. As I mentioned, Hugh Harmon was the creator. When he passed away, the New York Times acknowledged in his obituary that was posted to the New York Times that he and Peace on Earth were nominees of the Nobel Peace Prize. Despite that, his name does not appear anywhere in the official nomination archive of the Nobel Prize website, and I went in myself <laughs> to see if I could find it, and I could not. So I was like, is this just something that got confused through history? But in the 1994 book, My Life in Tunes, Joseph Barbera, he wrote, and I quote, nominated for an Academy Award, it was also cited for by the Nobel Prize Committee. I assume the only cartoon to earn that distinction. Joseph Barbera would know better than anybody what the history of this cartoon was because him and William Hanna remade it in 1955 to coincide with the Vietnam War with extremely similar dialogue. Hmm. It seems weird to me that he would be speaking about that out of term. It's weird because this feels like something that we should have a historical answer to and it should be very simple to find out but it seems to not be. And I wonder if maybe being cited by the Nobel Prize Committee and being nominated could possibly be slightly different things and that's where the confusion is? That's what I was thinking. I th I'd be willing to bet that the editor of the New York Times was just like, had a hangover when he was writing that one and was just like, cited, nominated, it's the same shit. And it's interesting, right? Because it sort of shows how history can sometimes be distorted. And I don't want that to take away from the fact that this is an incredible cartoon and without a doubt, like a very important piece of history. And for it to yeah. do the things that it did is obviously impressive, whether it got nominated for a Nobel Prize or not. But yeah. even if that was in the vein of possibility, that's pretty awesome. And speaking about Joseph Barbera and William Hanna's uh, remake, their version was titled Goodwill to Men and also received an Academy Award nomination for Best Short Subject, just like its original Peace on Earth. I, I understand why they re-released it, because the anti-war sentiment was even more prevalent during the Vietnam era than it was during yeah, World War true. II. Very so true. I can understand how they would want to kind of like bring it to new audiences in a new way. But again, very, very similar. That's the interesting history that surrounds this cartoon. But Lucas, let's get into talking about our experience watching it. Let me walk you through my experience here, right? So I'm remembering that I've seen this as I'm watching it. I like see this nice grandfatherly squirrel walk into a place of, you know, other sentient squirrels and, and they're just like, oh, hi, children. Let me tell you a good old story about humanity. And I'm like, oh, I kind of remember this. That's right. Yeah. Th and this is very Christmassy vibe. We start with the, the Peace on Earth song and then they're like, this all started with war. And then you see like a soldier with a, like a bayonet with a knife on the end and stuff like that. I'm just like, mm -hmm. Oh my god, I remember this now. He tells the story of how, like, humanity was at war. He's like, I never did understand those humans. They all just killed each other and they died. They're all gone. They find, like, a Bible or the Ten Commandments or something like that. I don't know anything about Christianity. Don't, don't at me. They find this Bible or whatever. Thou shalt not kill. I guess they didn't do that one. I guess that was off. The... We're reading this. this. This was probably in the discount section of the library or whatever, which stands to reason based on the last trend of the last hundred years. Then they read this other one that was like, thou shalt rebuild from the wastes. Okay, this random ass book says it. I guess it's time to rebuild civilization. And apparently all that was holding back all of the animal kingdom from developing as if they were a sovereign nation was humanity. So just another reason why our presence is just f***ing up the world, I guess. <laughs> I love hearing your quick takes. Let me give some even more context for people who haven't seen this. We immediately get transported to this place with a beautiful version of Peace on Earth. It goes, Peace on Earth, Goodwill to Men. The little kids are wondering, as the grandfather squirrel explains, like, what are men? Because in this world, they don't know the men because the men have been extinct after fighting at war. And it really provides a very interesting moral lesson about what can happen when there's senseless fighting. To your point, the symbolism of 
the last soldier dying, and the animation on this was terrific. He takes the last shot and struggles. You know, this is from 1939, and he goes under the water, and it's like, wow, that's the end of humanity. Also, though, the symbolism of the book. These animals going to this church after the people are gone, and this church is depleted, it's destroyed, you know? This place that is a symbol for God or humanity and the sense of morality that humans cling to, right, is symbolized in this broken church. You see an open book, it says, Thou shall not kill. And I think that it does a really amazing job at sort of depicting the flimsy sense of morality that all of us hold and how we have some kind of idea of what we consider to be moral, but we will bend that to our personal philosophies or sometimes what works at the time. It's confirmation bias for the psychology people. And all my jokes aside, the way that they actually were able to try to deliver this commentary through a cartoon, it's very different from the other war-based cartoons we were seeing at the time, which yeah. were very much like propaganda filled. It was very much pro the war and pro glorifying our soldiers and stuff like that. I I'm impressed that this exists at all and like I'm poking fun at it because I'm an asshole but in all honesty like all the animation for the time was also pretty stunning 1939 this is pretty decent animation and yeah man the fact that they're able to hammer home this message about the problem and, and the potential death that we're you know signing ourselves off to in the future it's a message that still works today we don't have to be in world war ii for this to still be very relevant in my opinion i think we're very much facing mostly it's more environmentalism right related than like just shooting each other but you know in general the ruin of humanity is something that's still very much on the table yeah you're right it holds up really well with some of the things that were going on that are going on in the society right now and you know we see the symbolism of the bible or this uh holy book as it were and regardless of that no matter what the book is the message comes through as people are going to fight about pointless things regardless about what any kind of book will tell them and there's serious risk to that and i think that regardless of you know whether you're christian whatever you celebrate uh there is a lesson to be learned here and that violence could be senseless no matter who's telling you it's a good or a bad idea there's a better reason not to kill people than just it was written in a book that's a in philosophy that's an appeal to authority and it's invalid on all accounts so think <laughs> for yourselves there's better there's logic for our morality i promise it exists to that point i think that the holiday season has come to symbolize a lot of different things for a lot of different people obviously lucas and i are christmas celebrators and we're not necessarily religious in exactly that same way but yeah, i just celebrate still something... the luxuries of capitalism <laughs> And I celebrate the symbolism and nostalgia of just certain smells and sights and movies and cartoons that I remember from my childhood. Nostalgia is something that can make people happy. It's also something that can make them very sad. It's also something that can make them cling to things that are now wrong and horrible because they have a sense of attachment to it from their childhood when maybe something isn't really worth holding on to anymore. Like, I'm excited but, for the next war. <laughs> just Stop. What I try to tell people is that good nostalgia is something that can be harnessed in a positive way. When you have a feeling, a sensation that brings you back to your childhood, you can take that and be like, wow, I'm very appreciative of having this feeling, this rush of nostalgia that just came to me, and then not be attached to any kind of feeling of, I wish right now was still like how that was. Because the sensation is really the amazing thing you're getting. And nostalgia itself can be a present moment experience when people are able to see it that way, and it's not easy. But I feel like Christmas is one of those things that it showers people with nostalgia, and it feels like it's easy, but watch this cartoon, and obviously there is sadness behind it, but there also is joy. And that's something that came to mind for me, of this society exists where there is peace, and I cling to the peace, you know? I look at that yeah. and I'm like, I... I walk away with this message, it makes me feel heartwarmed. I know that seems maybe a little bit weird because I guess the message is a little bit somber, but I love that they went there, you know? I love that I have um, an appreciation for the beauty of this cartoon, and it makes me want to take it and apply it to other people in the world, you know? Well, and I think the intended message is this is a warning of what could come but doesn't have to. Yes. But, but what I gain from it is different. <laughs> oh man, we really need to get humanity out of here for the world to thrive again, like. <laughs> but uh, that's just me. So uh, <laughs> let, let us know what you think about this in the comments. Which, are you on the, the happy, harness the peace and joy on Alex's side, or are you on the, 
get humanity out on, on my side. I don't know. Uh, I'm kind <laughs> of joking. I mean it a little bit. I don't know. You you make the you you decide. What do I mean? Sure. And if anybody is like a super sleuth and wants to try to do some more digging to prove that this was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, I'd also be super open to seeing that in the comments. I really wanted to open up Christmas month with this. The nightmare because, known as Christmas. Yeah, it doesn't have a super strong Christmas theme. Like, the, the theme is more about peace around the holidays and trying to bring yeah, out the good in true. people overall, right? Transitioning into this with a subject matter that is a little bit more serious gives the audience a chance to hear what our thoughts are about Christmas and, like, the reason that we like some of these things. Because as we approach, there might be a little bit more cheeriness over the coming episodes, but this is deep and beautiful and wonderful, and that's one of the things that I like about the holidays and connecting with people in a positive way. Connecting with you, audience. Having thankfulness. I'm so thankful to everybody who is seriously watched up at this point. Um, geez. Me too. I'm just like on a soliloquy today. Do you have anything else yeah. that you wanted to share about this or about um, anything? Everybody, Alex, uh, Alex Holiday Joy is going to make a bitch of an editing job for me on this video. So please like and subscribe. That would be very good. Uh, make, make the work worth it. I put a lot of time. Alex puts, we both put a lot into this. So allow us to keep doing this for you closer to full time and uh, help us out with the old subscriptions and likes. Let us know in the comments if you have anything you'd want us to cover for things like Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, any other holidays around this time. I'd be interested to explore some other non-Christmas related things personally. Yeah, no, I'm super open to that as well. I can tease what's coming up next week, actually. Do it. People, the Pac-Man Christmas special. When I tell you to watch this thing before you watch us talk about it, Please do. It's part of. It's gonna be part of the weird cartoon series. This thing is wild. It's so good. Have some eggnog, spiked or not, depending on how you partake. Just have a good time. Uh, my secondary in Smash Bros. Ultimate is Pac-Man, so I'm going to enjoy this a little bit more. My Pac-Man mains, hit me up in the comments. Let's go. I'm sure nobody is going to do that. <laughs> maybe one. Maybe one. All right, all right let's, guys. Let's go. I yes. want to leave. Goodbye. Check out our social media and all the other stuff. We love you. Happy holidays. Peace on earth, everybody. Don't be an asshole today. Just just today, you know, just try it. Practice. Other days would be good too, but we'll take a day. Other days would be nice, but you know, we all, we all one day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye everybody.